The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Fox. It is an absolutely gorgeous day in Charlotte County, Florida. The sun is out, clear skies, and just cool enough to be comfortable as the Tampa Bay Rays play host to the Philadelphia Phillies. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Spring Training Baseball with Todd Callis. I'm Dwayne Stats. We'll be hearing from Arrestes Distrato throughout the day as well. Great to have you looking in. Well, the Rays have the best pitching in baseball this spring. Nothing new about that. And, Todd, this afternoon, Matt Moore, who's still trying to find where he'd like to be this spring, is going to go to the Hill. Yeah, he's just 23 years old, and sometimes people forget that because the expectations were so high on Matt last season. And you're right. He hasn't had the best spring yet, but he's a guy who self-admittedly has had issues in the beginning of the season getting comfortable. So here he is making another start. Today we're going to see Matt extend to about 75 pitches, looking for that velocity somewhere in the mid-90s where we're normally used to seeing Matt during the course of the regular season. In our last telecast, you saw he allowed a three-run home run in that game in the fourth inning. But other than that, he was very good, especially early in the game. A changeup that he left up ended up being a three-run homer. After Matt Moore, we're going to see a couple of guys in Joel Peralta and Kyle Farnsworth, who will be on the big league team. Jamie Wright, a non-roster invitee, has a very good chance to make the big league squad as well. And Brandon Gomes is having a nice spring for the Rays. And so that lineup of pitching, one of the reasons that Joe Madden continues to be very optimistic with what he's seen here in Charlotte County this spring. When we come back, first pitch just moments away, and Arrestus Castrano will be visiting with Desmond Jennings. Mark with me, the center fielder of the Tampa Bay Rays, and Desmond Jennings. Desmond, has got to sound nice being the center fielder. Last year was left field. What significance is it going back to a familiar place for you in center field? I mean, it's nice. It's nice to be back out there. You know, um, to be back, I feel like it's back home for me. You know, I feel like uh, it's a place where I, where I want to be, where I want to play. So it's, uh, it's good. It's good for me. What about the offensively for you? Are you going to be a catalyst leading off most of the time? Obviously, Running is a key part of your game. How do you feel about your stolen bases this year? And obviously run production, which is a key thing, setting the table for the likes of Zobris and the likes of Longoria. Well, that's, I mean, it's all season, man. That's all I, I, I thought about. That's all I train myself for is um, to, to score, man. I want to get on base. You know, I want to score more runs than I did last year. You know, uh, my main goal, obviously, is to, is to get on base and set the tone for the game and, and get in scoring position for the guys to come up, you know, behind me and score some runs. Well, stay healthy and have a great year, buddy. There you go. Desmond Jennings, center fielder for the Rays. Back to you, D. All right, Arrestus, thank you very much. And uh, Desmond Jennings has done uh, everything so far this spring that he had set out to do. We'll be talking about that throughout the afternoon, and he's going to be in that leadoff spot for Joe Madden. So that has been a step in the right direction this spring. And, Todd, uh, Joe continues to say that this is 
without question, the best group he's ever had in his tenure as manager of the Rays as far as spring training goes. I think Desmond Jennings is one of the better stories of this spring. The way he has approached every plate appearance with his patience is amazing. He's turned things around from last year when maybe he chased a little bit outside the zone. And Joe has a right to think this is the best group of Rays players uh, because they have a lot of talent. They have a lot of uh, defensive upgrades on the infield, we hope. And then we'll see if that infield could also provide some pop as well. Well, let's take a look at the Philadelphia Phillies lineup this afternoon, put together by Charlie Manuel. And Ben Revere is going to lead it off in center field, coming over to the National League. Kevin Franson is at second, and Michael Young, the veteran, is at third. Young coming over from Texas. He'll play third and hit third. Dominic Brown, the cleanup man. Darren Ruff's in left. Carlos Ruiz will catch. John Mayberry Jr. at first. Josh Fields is the DH, and Freddie Galvez is the shortstop. He'll be batting ninth. And the lineup that will be facing this left-hander for the Rays from the Phillies. You just saw their lineup. Matt Moore will make his fourth start for Tampa Bay. So far in his first three starts, an inning and two-thirds, two and two-thirds, three and two-thirds. So we'll see if that trend continues, and he goes four and two-thirds today. He'll have a pitch count of about 75. Looking for that velocity to ramp up closer to where he is during the season, which would be in the mid-90s. Behind him defensively for the Rays in the outfield, Sean Rodriguez, who has played just about everywhere this spring other than catcher. He's in left field. Desmond Jen Jennings in center, and the young stud, Will Myers, is in right. The infield, Evan Longoria, Yanel Escobar, Kelly Johnson, and for the first time ever, Ryan Roberts at first base, Jose Lobaton behind the dish, and he'll be putting down the signals for the left-hander, Matt Moore. And today's Rays game brought to you in stunning high definition by H.H. Gregg. Just a perfect day for baseball. Here is the Rays and the Philadelphia Phillies square off. The Rays have had some fortune, good fortune, against this Philadelphia ball club. They're meeting for the third time in four scheduled games this year, and so far they're 2-0 and against the Philadelphia Phillies. So Matt Moore all set to go to work. And Ben Revere will be the first man he faces. Revere, not much power, but great speed. And his game is to keep the ball on the ground and take advantage of that great speed. Ray saw him last in a Minnesota Twins uniform. And first pitch for Matt Moore is a strike and that's a step in the right direction for man sean rodriguez will get the first opportunity defensively and he handles the fly ball one away sean has played some center in first base and today in left field such a valuable part of this race team he is just like ben zobris was in the beginning of his career that super utility guy that can play everywhere the Rays trademark versatility and Ben Zobrist has held that uh, spot can play all over the place and hit any place in the lineup and now Sean Rodriguez literally playing all over the place Kevin Franson the hitter that's a strike so a couple of first pitch strikes to start this outing for more pitch disappeared 0-2. How about that? Four pitches, four strikes. He has that fastball changeup combination working. He could be really good. And right back to make quick work of Francis. But two great pitches right there. Third baseman number 10. Completely Michael Young. dropped out of sight. 0-2 pitch. And that is just a beautiful snap on the curveball, diving down at the plate. Matt Moore off to a great start this afternoon, just like he was in that Boston game, his last start. Here's Michael Young. His numbers last year with Texas. He's had a good spring. And 
he takes the pitch for a strike. So three first pitch strikes. Nothing but strikes from Matt Moore so far. A shot and a one hopper. Kelly Johnson takes care of that, and it's a one, two, three first inning for Matt Moore. Rays are coming in to hit. He saw out of Matt Moore in the top of the first seven pitches, seven strikes, and a one, two, three inning. Here's the lineup put together by Matt today Desmond Jennings, followed by Escobar and Longoria. Shelly Duncan, the cleanup man, the DH. Roberts hits fifth. It's Kelly Johnson hitting sixth in front of Sean Rodriguez. Will Myers in there in right field today, hitting eighth in front of Jose Lobaton. And the pitcher they will face this afternoon is the guy they saw in his last start. John Lannon pitched against the Rays on Saturday in Bright House Network's field in Clearwater. And he gave up five runs in that outing against the Rays. Lannon getting the start today for the Philadelphia Phillies, former Washington National left-hander who will be in the back end of the rotation this year for the Phillies after signing as a free agent this offseason. Desmond Jennings leads it off. Desmond has put together leadoff man like numbers here this spring. This one dislodging the mask of the catcher Carlos Ruiz. See the batting average good for Jennings but the on base percentage is over 500. He walked a lot this spring. the bonus tip. Yeah, he has been everything the Rays could hope for this spring. He loves playing center field. You heard him talk to Arrestus Estrada about that. As a leadoff hitter, he's taking pitches. He is attempting that every once in a while, the bunt. And Joe Madden obviously looks a lot different than he did yesterday or earlier this morning. He's hit. He takes this one the other way. Jennings is aboard to lead it off. The rest is down there in the dugout. What's going on down there? You guys talked a lot about Desmond, and as I got a chance to talk to him for a few minutes before the game, I think that uh, he's really, really pumped up about doing what he kind of did at the end, the last two months of 11, which was, as TK mentioned, be more patient at the plate, go deeper into counts, go to right field. What does that create? On base percentage. And what does that create? Hopefully 50 to 60 stolen bases, which leads to hopefully over 100 runs scored. Escobar taking a strike. Arrestes, you've seen players, and I think Jennings might be one of them. You know, you get to the big leagues, you try to establish yourself, you're sort of playing in the shadow of a couple of uh, very talented players, and suddenly you're asked to be the guy to step in there and play center field and, and lead off. And it would appear to me that uh, he's answering that challenge. Well, the answer that he gave me to the second question about being the run producer, the run scorer, was very uh, interesting because he said this winter I took it upon myself. So that's a ball player right there that he went this winter. He really kind of looked at what he could possibly do and what he was going to be called on to do. Branson with a little toss to Galvis in the middle and the throw to first. The Phillies turned the double play on that chopper by Escobar. 
Nicely turned double play by the middle of the Phillies defense. Franzen and also Galvis. Here you see their defense behind John Lannon, Darren Ruff, Ben Revere, Dominic Brown, your outfield. Michael Young and John Mayberry in the corners. We talked about the double play combo up the middle. And Carlos Schuch Ruiz behind the play for John Lannon. Well, who's having Longoria now with the bases empty against the lefty? Pitches down. Todd, I remember an interview you did with Desmond Jennings. Uh, when we first saw him in a Rays uniform, he came up from the minor leagues, just uh, had been around for a couple of days, and it was going to go uh, back and, and figure out uh, things that he needed to work on before he actually got to the big leagues to stay. And, and you asked him what, if there was any one thing that he needed to work on. And I, I, I loved his answer then. He told you that, that, oh, there were so many things about his game that he had to work on. He really... He, he couldn't give you just one answer. And I, I thought that was not only a humble answer, but a realistic answer and one of, that a guy who was trying to improve his game uh, would carry with him. He is a, an excellent, excellent athlete. I mean, a football player, wide receiver in high school, just a natural talent, whatever he does. And he has a high expectation of where he should be in the game of baseball. I think last year... Speaking of humble, really humbled him. I, I think last year he, he took a long look in the mirror this offseason, like Arrested said, and tried to figure out how he could become a better player. And uh, this spring, boy, he has been one of the bright spots in the Rays lineup. 2 2 now to Evan Longoria. Evan's had a good spring. of that went foul. Well, what a, what a difference it could make to this offense that struggled last year. If Jennings could consistently get on board uh, a spot or two in front of Longoria. Absolutely. With, with a healthy Evan Longoria who missed over half the season. I mean, you could take away you know, the addition of, you know, Escobar and Kelly Johnson, and we could talk more about that at another point, but just those two guys alone, what Desmond can bring to the table better than last year, and what Evan can bring to the table healthier than last year, should improve this offense, regardless of who else is in the lineup. And it's Grant by Galvez, the short stop to retire the side. Line drive by Longoria. We're through one. No score. No score. We head into the second inning. Dominic Brown will be the leadoff man for the Philadelphia Phillies. The rest is Descarta continues his role with the dugout duty in the race. Dugout, let's go down to the rest is now. Hey, Dwayne, uh, the beauty of uh, spring training is that we can actually have dugout duty. And as a former player, I, it's nice to be in the dugout during an actual Major League spring training game. And with me is the bench coach. Uh, Davey Martinez and Davey, uh, spring training. I mean, just uh, real quickly, talk a little bit about it. We're 
we're getting to that middle towards the latter part stages of it. And uh, what's your, you know, thought process and what's your kind of message to the guys? Well, right now, you know, like you said, we're in the middle of spring training and uh, guys should already have their uh, legs underneath them. So they start getting, accumulate more innings playing, more at-bats, uh, get, them, get them in there two three days in a row and uh, really start working on, on just the, you know, their overall game, get ready for the season. You are a former Major League All-Star outfielder. Uh, the kid that led off and has been really having a strong spring. We've been talking a lot about him, Desmond Jennings. He seems to be extremely focused this year. How much does the change back to the comfortable position in center field? You played all the different positions uh, uh, play in effect uh, maybe his game right now. Well, I think it really is going to help him. Uh, like you said, um, he's very, uh, he feels very comfortable playing, uh, playing center field. He's got tremendous jumps. Um, the balls pretty much go straight at him, which, which is what he likes. Uh, so I think you're going to see an unbelievable year from Desmond. Uh, as you saw in the first inning, you know, his big, the big key is having him stay on the ball and hitting the ball to the right side of the field. He had two strikes, and he did that beautifully. If he can do that, you're seeing a, a, a future all-star. Overall, we have had, you know, some personnel changes. Uh, we, in fact, we just saw one right now. Ryan Roberts uh, playing first base. They're looking a little bit like Steve Garvey back in the day. Uh, as, in fact, if you look at the two of them, those are the two first basemen right now. One's like six foot ten, and the other one is uh, not as tall. But uh, you, talk a little bit about the dynamics of how many different positions guys are going to be playing, and you're going to be moving guys all over the place this year. Yeah, Joe and I definitely like the, uh, the versatility of, of our guys. Uh, you know, they're athletes, you know, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to help us win. And a perfect example, like you said, is Ryan Roberts uh, playing some first base today. You know, um, in the course of a season, in the course of a, 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 of a series, you know, we might might do some things to get the get the be, you know, best nine guys out there uh, in a, against a particular pitcher. Um, so we we like to try different things and see what guys can do. Lastly, um, a guy that's uh, gotten a lot of playing time and a lot of hype because of the trade with uh, Kansas City. In Will Myers, uh, what have you seen? Again, uh, an outfielder you can relate to. Uh, what have you seen with the kid uh, defensively and offensively? And there's one that gets away from Ryan Roberts, and Brown will go on to second base. But what do you see with the kid Will Myers as, as a future? Well, I, I definitely see he's got a bright future. Um, I can see why, you know, we, we traded uh, potentially one of our better pitchers uh, if not one of our better pitchers and a good guy that we had in Wade Davis as well. Uh, but this guy, the upside is unbelievable, man. This guy's got all the tools, uh, and he runs really well for a big guy. You know, we, I didn't know what to expect, but he, he runs really, really well for a, a big guy. Um, I think, you know, he's going to be a big part of our, our future for sure, and he, he might help us even this year. That's uh, interesting to hear even this year. Well, listen, Davey, thank you very much for coming on with us. And there's a ground ball to Younell, and uh, there's the first out. And back up to the booth with Dwayne and TK. All right, oh, thank you very much. Uh, Dominic Brown winds up at third on that ground ball. Brown singled on that 0-2 pitch. In fact, Moore had opened this game by throwing 11 consecutive strikes, something that uh, Joe Madden and Jim Hickey have been looking for. So now with the error and the advance to third on the ground ball, Brown over there with only one out of the infield is pulled in for Carlos Ruiz. A very impressive start to the game for Matt Moore. A little late covering or else he probably wouldn't have this situation with the infield in. Ryan Roberts using Luke Scott's glove over at first base today made a fine play, but they didn't get the runner Brown. Then on that pickoff throw, it was in the dirt. And, of course, Roberts is still new over there, so that's going to be one of the areas. You know, tried to backhand it, just went off his glove. They haven't posted an error yet, but that's got to be an error on Moore that allowed Brown to go to second. Down to third with the throw. One hopper in. Two and one to count to Ruiz. There was a great stop over at first by Ron Roberts on that hard hit ball by Brown. Brown now at third. Two and two. Boy, I tell you, not only have we seen the good fastball, but and well located, but change up and a curveball here in the first couple innings 
from Matt Moore. Really has the Phillies off balance first time around in the lineup. Now he's got Ruiz set up where he can go for the punch out either with that same pitch down low or a high fastball. And a looper the other way into right. And that's going to get the run home. And Ruiz serves it into right field. And it's 1 0 Philadelphia. Well, a 2 1 pitch was a really nasty curveball that Ruiz swung on top of. That last one had a lot of the plate, was about thigh highs. Ruiz was able to hit it in the right field for the first RBI of the day. Kind of like Davies' new look there. The yeah. new uh, freshly shaved head, he what? and Joe. And they're going for the sun factor today, it looks like. They're not, not hiding their scalps. This one is down while the, the Rays. Led by Joe Madden and uh, the Rays players and the members of the organization shaved their heads today as a uh, tribute to and uh, an effort to raise money for the Pediatric Cancer Foundation. Fortune favors the ball. Second year they've done it. They were all set up above the right field wall. We're going to talk with Stu Sternberg a little bit later on. And uh, Joe Madden as well. Jeremy Hellickson. Jeremy didn't have to take too much off. And Luke uh, sacrificed his beard. How about that? That's big. One and two. That is his off-season hunting beard. There's Joe. Yeah, look at Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those guys getting a little sun as quickly as they can. Normally they're wearing caps in the dugout. Today they're going for a little suntan action. Still one and two, and the uh, the Rays and the uh, players and staff, not the only ones, are our esteemed producer Mike Griffin got into the act. How about this? All of those golden locks gone. Michaela, who has uh, <laughs> battled uh, cancer as a, a, a young lady, better off not. in fact, has. Uh, spent some time uh, volunteering and doing work at the Quantum Leap Farm and their efforts to help pediatric cancer, the Pediatric Cancer Foundation. The Rays, very big in that effort. And so it was Michaela who uh, took the, the razor to uh, the locks of Mike Griffin. I want to personally thank Griff for taking the heat off of us. He represented That's the television right. crew. Myself, you, Orestes, I don't think we were quite ready for that. Uh... Hey, it's scary enough with hair. <laughs> and without it, it's uh, too scary. I'm trying to restore my hair at this age. <laughs> I, do not, I do not need people scalping my head at this point. But, yeah, thanks to Mike Griffin. And, uh, you know, there is a way for people to get involved, not just through fans that cut their hair today, but you can go to PCF Cut for Your Cure. PCF is Pediatric Cancer Foundation, PCFCutForYourCure.org, and people can go on there and contribute money for uh, an unbelievable cause. There it is right there on your screen. 2-2 Two -two the count to Mayberry. And Moore goes all the way out. Phillies have scored a run. They have a man in second with one out. Matt breezed through the first inning and came out throwing strikes here in the second. Of course, another payoff pitch, 3-2. These couple of innings are kind of how things have been for Matt Moore this spring, where you saw him the first seven pitches in the first inning, all strikes, ended up with 11 in a row. And this inning, not, you know, just all, a wild throw to first that caused an error, wild pitch at the plate. A little 2-2 curveball that was up in the zone to hit into right field. Ground ball where he wasn't covering. Not terrible, but still not on top of his game like the first inning. Well, he made only seven pitches in the first inning. And here we are, uh, one out into the second. And he's made 21 pitches already in this inning. There you go. There you see that. Uh, you would love to see that consistency where he's somewhere in the 10 to 15 range every inning. And that will come as the spring and season moves along. But right now, still looking for that uh, consistency inning to inning this spring for Matt Moore. And 
Cincinnati against Mayberry. It's a bit of the fastballs Matt has. His breaking stuff today has been really good. 3-2 pitch. They've been battling. And there you see Mayberry swinging over that pitch. Good action at the plate. Obviously, the Phillies chased a few down at their ankles. So he's got some really good break on that pitch today. So a big strikeout for him. Trying to limit the damage to just the one run. And now the designated hitter, Josh Fields, steps in. Really burst up on the scene for the Rays at the, a very tender age. Made a big impression in postseason play. And so a lot has been expected of him. And sometimes, sometimes you, you forget the idea that he is as young and inexperienced as he is. I was looking that up today, Dwayne, that his age right now. At David Price's point of his career at that age, Price was still in the minor leagues in 2009. Obviously, his career has taken a big jump since then. But that's where people sometimes forget that this guy has already pitched a full major league season. He is 23 years old. And at this age, 23 and whatever number of months it is, as he turns 24 in June, David Price was still in the minor leagues in 2009. Price, I see talking to our own Arrestus Destrada right now. But that's an amazing thing to think about because everybody expects Matt Moore to be at a certain place when he is so young. Well, he stepped in in that postseason game against Texas to open the postseason and it was so good in that outing. It was in the one of the biggest spotlights that you could be in. And all of a sudden, as promising as he had been prior to that leading up to that with that performance the expectation level became enormous and similarly to price with what he did in 08 and then the Rays elected not to start David Price at the big league level in 09 wanted to see him work in the minor leagues to start that season whereas Moore was on the opening day roster and made 30 plus starts last year Full count to Fields. And he lost him with the fastball up. And that's going to get Jim Hickey out there. Well, I think he's going to talk to Matt about, you know, where he is in this inning. You mentioned his pitch count. As much of anything, maybe not just a mechanics thing right here, but maybe just to give him a little bit of a breather. Because you go seven pitches one inning and now 27 in this one. That's a long inning, and again, you know, a lot of mistakes in the field, not covering first base in time, and wild pickoff throw to first, a pitch in the dirt. It's been a little bit of a, a roller coaster in this game with an unbelievably solid first inning, and now a little bit of a shaky second inning. Now, so far, this outing, pretty typical of the spring for Matt Moore. Brings baseball to Tropicana Field. That's the perfect place to hope to hold your group event. Whether you're getting a group of friends together, entertaining clients and employees, Tropicana Field, the place to be. Visit racebaseball.com or call 855 Group TV for more information. First block by Lobaton on the first pitch to the Philly shortstop, Freddie Galvez. Galvez hitting 283 for the spring. Two and oh, and boy, as sharp as he was in the first inning, the deeper the second inning gets, the more he struggles. It's a, a schizophrenic thing with him this this spring. It's really been weird. It's almost like two different guys are out there, one inning into the next. He continues to miss in that same vicinity, and, and that's been the challenge for Matt Moore. 
And Jim Hickey. <laughs> and Jim Hickey, that's right. Bills have an interesting decision with Galvis. They, they would like to see him get a lot of at-bats if possible, and if he makes the big league team, he would be able to spell, you know, Jimmy Rollins at short, Michael Young at third, and also Chase Utley at second. And the other angle is you want to get him a lot of at-bats and let him play in the minor leagues and get an everyday situation down there. It's kind of one of those difficult situations that the Phillies are deciding on this spring, and I, I think right now they're leaning towards having him make the big league team. Third consecutive full count Moore has had on a hitter in this inning. It's over 30 pitches in the inning, and Galvis forcing another one here. It really is amazing. Over 30 pitches, one run allowed, could very easily get out of this inning with only one run allowed. But he was on a 75 pitch count coming in. We thought maybe that would be five innings, but it's looking more like four after this inning. that he's up to 34 right now mm. and Galvis chases one up Strikes out to retire the side. So the Phillies settle for a run. The Rays down one nothing. The Rays trail the Phillies as the Rays come into hit at the bottom of the second. Reminder to cheer on the American League Cy Young Award winner David Price in the Rays opening day. Be part of the craziest new fan section in Tampa Bay District K-9. Especially Price $50 ticket includes a lower level seat, a District K-9 t-shirt, and a K-card. To purchase tickets, visit RaysBaseball.com slash District K-9. The Rays got a base hit on John Landon in the first. That's been Jennings, but he was doubled up. So it'll be Shelly Duncan, Brian Roberts, and Kelly Johnson up to hit against the lefty. They did give the error in the top of the inning to Moore on the throw. On that pickoff attempt after Dominic Brown had opened with the base hit. And he eventually scored the one run allowed. Duncan leading it off. He's had a couple of home runs. This spring. <laughs> He's got a fish. How about that? That's pretty good. That's what the crowd was reacting to. Good fishing around here. Hard to go one inning to the next and go five times as many pitches in your second inning and still have a one nothing game. <laughs> Yeah, his, his line so far is amazing because the first 11 pitches he threw were strikes. A little 
little break here, a little uh, mid afternoon lunch. How about that? Sushi's always good in Port Charlotte. <laughs> You know, I watching Shelly Duncan this year, you mentioned a couple of home runs. His first one came in that Dunedin game uh, on the road against Toronto, and it, that was one of the, the first time that Joe Madden asked him to use a heavier bat. We talked about that in the last broadcast with the rest of Estrada, and since then, Shelly's like, well, after I hit that first home run, it couldn't change. A roller from Young. You know, Duncan's one of those guys... Because he has power, but he's a he's a perfect matchup guy to play for a manager like Joe Madden. I think good. I thought for sure. I think coming into the spring, I wasn't sure where he's going to fit in. But I think with his right-handed bat, the Rays are very left-handed. That at some point this year, he could make an impact on this team. Yeah, I think so. And as right-handed hitters go, I, I know that uh, Arrestes would have a, a special insight into a guy like that. Yeah, I think that. Uh, he could be very instrumental, especially as TK said. We've got a plethora of left-handed hitters uh, all throughout this lineup, and obviously Joe loves to you know mix and match and go lefty-righty. And uh, this is a guy that can play first base again. When you're talking about versatility and duality of positions, uh, and play left field and play it pretty well. So there's a foul ball by Roberts. I, I think guys that that uh, I, I like him a lot when you're looking at who's available. As a guy that's been through the war, remember, he was with the Yankees back in 09 and played a little bit towards the tail end of that uh, World Series year for them. And uh, he's been in the American League now for, for the last few years, and he knows the spot duty play. He knows when to come in, come out, and uh, I, I like him a heck of a lot. Well, I think the Rays, uh, not only have they been so pleased with uh, their pitching and their defense here this spring, Roberts out on strikes, but I think they're... A much better team when it comes to positional and player depth. And, and guys like Duncan, one of the reasons. Fontenot is another guy who would fit that role. Uh, guys who've been around, who do a lot of things right, and who, if you spot them correctly, as Joe Madden has such a great ability to do, uh, they can really help. And here's Kelly Johnson. Johnson's a guy coming over. You figure you see him a lot at second base, but you know he's he's played shortstop. Uh, he can play third. He can play second. He's he's been over at first under the tutelage of uh, Tom Foley, and he's played the outfield. And he's a left-handed bat with some pop. Two and one to count. It's almost a prerequisite here. If you're going to wear the raised colors, you've got to be able to play a lot of positions and maybe hit anywhere in the lineup. Well, if you think about last year, there, there were times when, you know, the Rays had injuries and they were finding guys from other organizations, uh, whether it be, you know, a Ben Francisco or Drew Sutton who was picked up or even Hideki Matsui. This year, the depth is within the organization. You mentioned a Fontenot, a Bien Figueroa open spies. You've got, you know, Beckham and Hachi Lee at shortstop. Uh, Shelly Duncan. Will Myers is more than likely not going to make the team. You've got guys who this year, you can, you don't have to go out and search for replacements if you have injuries. Johnson, second strikeout of the inning for Landon. The Rays are up and down, one, two, three. And we're headed toward inning number three. For the score, the Phillies won and the Rays double.
ball game moves into the third inning here in Charlotte County on a beautiful afternoon. The Rays and the Philadelphia Phillies meeting for the third time this spring. And Matt Moore, who had a very quick and efficient first inning, making just seven pitches and picking up a strikeout, found himself making 35 pitches in the second and allowed just the one run. So he'll start fresh here in the third with the top of the batting order, Ben Revere. Revere and a fly ball to left his first time. It's something that he would prefer not to do is hit the ball into the air. And the bunt. Moore makes the throw to first, but not in time. And there's some of the speed that we talked about at the outset with Revere and what the Phillies hope to get out of him. He's not a big extra base hit guy. He wants to bunt and keep the ball on the ground. And you can see a nice bunt right there. And with his speed, by the time Moore could scramble off the mound and make a play, there really wasn't much of a play to be made at first. And here is Franson, Kevin Franson. Pitch is down. Phillies like Francis bat, especially against left handed pitching. And he pops up the breaking ball. He's going to carry out a play. One and one. Solid stolen base threat. He had 40 a year ago. It's a tied up on that pitch and a bit fouled it the other way as he was trying to take advantage of that hole on the right side. Stays right in there and gets him, strikes him out for the second straight time. Take a look at that pitch. He got ahead and worked him down and in. It's a nice bite right there. That's the fourth strikeout posted by Matt Moore. And here's Michael Young. Fastball is up and away, and boy, we we see some good changeups early and good breaking stuff at times. And that fastball, it seems about half the time that uh, arm side to the right-handed hitter, he has trouble commanding that pitch. And that's something that has been a recurring theme throughout his young career, and certainly evident here this spring. Younger. Lifetime batting average of a little over 300. And there goes the runner. Roberts with a throw to second. And they get him. A nice job right there. Roberts took the pickoff throw from Moore and they've got a great angle stepping in. Had time to get it down. And Rivera is caught off first, a caught stealing. And here's a look. Rivera leaving on first move, and Escobar puts the tag on him. But a nice move in the middle there by Ryan Roberts playing first 
to come get the throw and get the great angle on the throw to the bag at second. So the base runner is erased and the count is one and one on Young. Escobar from shortstop makes the throw and then takes care of the Phillies. Home half of any three coming, one nothing Philadelphia. We are back here with the Phillies in the Rays. Stu and I were just talking in between innings. Stu Sternberg here, the principal owner of the Tampa Bay Rays. We're on that TV uh, camera right there in the dugout. You like that? New look for you today. Uh, fortune does favor the boldish as well as the bold. Uh, so this will be a start some fortune of the 91 season. Looks like a lot of guys in the dugout are going for the new bald suntan look. No caps are being worn by, by some of the newly shaved heads. Hey, yeah, it's, it's a little dangerous, so hopefully they're careful. Stu, you've been down here for a week now. Obviously, uh, you, you must like what you see. It seems like this Rays team maybe nationally isn't getting all the love that they had last year in 2009, but that could be a good thing. Yeah, as, I think as I said coming into last year, Everybody was so positive on us that I was concerned because the last time it happened was 09. It's the only two years we haven't made the postseason. We had a great season last year, I'd, and I'll take you know 90 wins any year. Uh, but we would we do have our sights set on the postseason. Dwayne and I were just talking about the depth of this team, and, and you look at some of the names and the faces that are not going to probably make this opening day roster. And it seems like maybe this year you don't have to look for for free agents from other teams if there's an injury and there's bound to be an injury or two. Yeah, there, yeah. La well, last year was more than, you know, it was an injury or two dozen. <laughs> so, you know, we actually, you know, we had to go far into the, the starting pitching depth last year into the minor leagues. We we did see some great things, especially with with Chris Archer coming up and uh, performing the way he did. Uh, but we look, we went free agent uh, this offseason even for pitching, sure. starting pitcher, which was a, a, a reliever possibly with Roberto Hernandez and then... Uh, Formerly known as Fausto The artist formerly known as All Star Pitcher. But yeah, the, the depth is, we thought we had enough depth last year, and we saw we went through everything, and clearly we hit a we hit a spot in uh, in the middle of the season you know, on the DH side and the, you know on the bat side of the ball. Uh, but you know, you lose a guy like Evan for that period of time that you know you can't replace, but you try to pick up the slack. Sean Rodriguez grounds out to start the inning. You are a great uh, seer of the future, I think. We, you were talking about Dan Johnson being a part of that game 162 a couple of years ago, and of course we know what happened in the ninth inning. You were the one that originally thought about bringing that wall down for Carl Crawford, and it ends up being uh, perfectly placed for Evelyn Gorgia's home run. If you could see into the future with a guy at the plate, when do you see Will Myers in a raised uniform at Tropicana Field? Well, first, it's stop clock theory. I am right, you know, twice a day. <laughs> uh, yeah, the funny thing about the wall was the car would make a catch as opposed to somebody <laughs> right, hitting right. it over. It still worked, though. Yes, it did. Uh, when it, when is, it was a harder thing to say as opposed to uh, I feel pretty certain that he's going to help us win some important games this year. And uh, September would be a great time to... to Help us get to the the, uh, the pennant drive, but I would expect we would see him before that. I like that. He's uh, certainly impressed everybody down here with his attitude. And two two pitches away, it's three and two. Uh, when you first saw him, what were your thoughts just watching him as a baseball fan? 
Well, at first, I, I, we saw a lot of uh, a video on him uh, before we traded for him, and then a ton of video after. I was, you know, he got much more interesting. Uh, but seeing him in person and chatting with him, first of all, just the fact that he doesn't wear batting gloves is always going to be a, there. Uh, sounded good right there, but uh, the sound is, it does sound. The thing I think when you, when you say what are, about seeing him is really the sound that comes off the, uh, the bat. Absolutely. I don't know why that happens exactly, but it sounds different. It does, and we heard that years ago with a Josh Hamilton when he was a young man coming up, and obviously uh, that has proven pretty pretty fine for him in his career. Before we let you go here with two outs, nobody on, we're not that far away from the, the thing starting for real here, just a couple, two and a half weeks or so when the Baltimore Orioles come to town. I know uh, you're looking forward to that day. Oh, yeah, very much. This is a long spring training with the World Baseball Classic and the season's starting a little later. So, uh, you know, the guys are getting at it. It'll be great to get a couple of our key players back, you know, Ben and uh, Fernando Rodney, who's been just lights out, which right. is nice to see. It, you know, I think he's got five appearances over, a whole bunch of saves, and hitting the radar gun pretty good there. Ben's been uh, done a good job for Team USA, and we're excited. We really are. We, we love what we do here. Uh, we'll see what, what roster, you know, what roster moves will need to be made and what we bring up, but I know we're going to hit the ground running. And, you know, with, in a classic race sense, we feel incredibly good about the pitching, uh, starting pitching especially. We'd like to see if the bullpen could do anything close to what it did last year. We know we'll be in great shape. And the addition at shortstop for us this year is, is really not to be undersold because uh, our defense last year uh, was embarrassing. Uh, to use a word, and not, you know, not the fault of the guys out there. People out of position quite often, and um, it, it was just too much. And we're looking forward to have Desmond see how he can do in center for a full season. I know, uh, and speaking to him about it, he's pretty uh, excited about seeing the ball come straight off the bat, and I think we're in for a fun year for, with him out there. Uh, but the defense, you know, clearly is going to be a strength for us again along with the pitching. And here we are in year six, hopefully, of another run this year. It's an amazing run uh, when you consider what this team is dealing with compared to others in the division. I think what, yeah, what we, had, we were chatting about in the offseason a little bit is that there are oh, only three teams that have been over 500 uh, since 2008. It's, it's incredible you, you, to think about it like that. And the number of 91 seasons we've had... Just they've been able to, to re regenerate this thing in 2011 again when everybody counted us out. Uh, we know we've got some incredibly stiff competition this year. Clearly the Orioles, you know, doing what they did last year. The Blue Jays, uh, who did as, did four times as much as any team in baseball this offseason. Uh, and then the Yankees and Red Sox, are, you know, will be in the mix as well. Yeah, and as intriguing a, an AL East as we have seen since the Rays have been a franchise in 98, you mentioned uh, the 500 record. The 90 wins or more, three out of the last five years, only the team in the other dugout, the Phillies and the New York Yankees, can make that claim along with the Rays, Stu, Thank you for joining us. We'll see you. Oh, a great season. Everybody. We'll see you very soon for opening day. Rays trail 1 0 as we head to the fourth I inning. Dwayne Stats and Arrest Mr. Sato will be coming back.
beautiful afternoon here in Charlotte County. It's 1-0. The Phillies lead the Rays. Matt Moore getting the start for the Rays this afternoon. A very impressive first inning, and then he struggled a bit in the second and came back with a very good third inning, so he'll face the middle part of the order. Dominic Brown, Darren Ruff, and then Carlos Ruiz here in the fourth inning. And while the Rays, under the tutelage of Joe Madden, were uh, getting their locks shorn here for a good cause to benefit the Pediatric Cancer Foundation. Uh, Brown with a fly ball to center. Joe's uh, better half, if you will, Jay Madden, is about to embark upon uh, uh, on a, an adventure that's uh, going to... Uh, take her across the country. Jay, are you on the phone with us now? I'm here. Uh, well, it's good. it's good to uh, good to hear your voice. Uh, Joe's uh, a little lighter here now because uh, uh, he followed through on the uh, uh, that uh, life uh, favors the uh, the bald and the bold by getting his uh, locks shorn today, and and you are out to. Uh, Across the country in your brand new RV for a good cause. Tell us about that. Uh, yes, we are uh, going to be hitting the road on this Tuesday, the 19th. Uh, it'll be myself, Winston, Athena, and my two sons, Ryan and Dylan. And Athena and, uh, is an eight and a half year old Great Dane, and Winston, uh, just a, a young English bulldog, right? Yes. And, I'm, and I am following Winston on Twitter, by the way, and I'm having a fun time with some of the the uh, things that Mr. Winston <laughs> says for the young for a young pup. Good. Thanks, Jay, and uh, I'm enjoying that. And I'm sure I'll be following you throughout your, your your travels on Twitter. I'm sure it'll be fun. You got a lot. He's got a lot of followers, actually. Oh, good, good, good. Ho- hopefully, I can put some really fun stuff out there. Uh, we're gonna have some little camera footage, either photography or a uh, little uh, video, and um, we want to um, ask people to donate a penny a mile for Pet Pal Animal Shelter. So you're going to start in Long Beach, and you'll wind up in Tampa Bay, and the idea is, rather than uh, than risk a stressful flight for, uh, for both dogs, but Athena being eight and a half, uh, the idea is that we'll put them in the RV, and you and uh, uh, Ryan and Dylan will cross the country in comfort and style, and uh, and so will uh, Athena and uh, exactly. Winston and uh, raise money at the same time. Exactly, and uh, I couldn't bear to put um, my furry children in the cargo area of an airplane, so... I um, went in search of how to how to go about getting them across the country <laughs> in comfort and safely. <laughs> well, just and as you mentioned, just a penny a mile. I I, I think that comes out to about thirty dollars for contribution uh, to PetPalAnimalShelter.com. And, Correct. And if you go to that uh, right away, you will see uh, the Madden Cross Country Drive-a-thon. And you can uh, click on that and donate. So it's uh, going to be very easy, and it's going to be it's going to be fun to track uh, your trek all the way across the country. And that's going to begin when is it Monday? Uh, Tuesday, March nineteenth. Okay. We'll hit the road, and um, uh, like you were saying, you can go to petpalanimalshelter.com to donate. You can also follow Winston at at. Uh, Winston C. Madden on Twitter. And uh, I'm also going to be doing a nightly uh, blog. And that should show up on the ML blogs page. Uh, and I'm just going to be writing on a daily basis what's what's happening right. on the trip. Well, Jay, we'll be, uh, we'll be following you and, uh, and your contingent. And we're hopeful that uh, we'll raise a lot of money for a great cause, the uh, Pet Pal Animal Shelters. Uh, it's uh, 
It's something that I know they, that you care a great deal about, and uh, a lot of us do as well. And we'll be uh, we'll be looking for your all of you for your safe arrival here then, in just a matter of uh, a few days. Great. Thanks very much, Dwayne. Okay, Jay. Take care, and uh, we uh, we'll look forward to seeing you very soon. Okay. See you soon. Thanks a lot. All righty. Well, that was Jay Madden, and uh, what a what a great idea that is. And by the way, oh, I've already talked to Joe. Uh, as we take a look at the website there, how you can donate. Talked to Joe about his RV. He said that we could use it. Oh, really? He said I could drive it, which means that our whole crew. Wow. We get a day off. We're in there. That and thing looks majestic. Yeah, it looks oh, beautiful. It'll be great. It's probably like one of those, you know, country rock stars uh, that you know they go on tour and it's got a little bit of everything in there. Flat screen TV. Well, a, a toilet that works. You know, that's crew, always key. That's I, always key. I mean, I, I mean, there'll probably be a special compartment for Todd Callis. <laughs> A palatial area for Todd. I'm just wondering where we're going to put uh, 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 Brian, you know? <laughs> BA needs his own compartment. So. Yeah. So. But that's a great, great idea. I mean, she needed to get over here with the animals, and why not uh, raise some money for a great cause over there in that pest shelter? Runner at first, Ruiz walked. Mayberry, John Mayberry Jr., the hitter, two outs, one one the count to the Phillies' first baseman. The other way, and that's Will Myers out there in right field. The Phillies are retired in the fourth. So we head into the home half of the inning. one nothing Philadelphia. One nothing Phillies lead. We head into the bottom of the fourth inning. Phillies scored a run in the second inning. The Rays will have Escobar, Longoria, and Duncan do up here. And uh, hey, those, uh, those haircuts uh, continue out there, don't they? They do. They, uh, Ronnie Porterfield, there he is, head trainer for the Rays. He told me in the dugout, I'm going to go around the third of the fourth. He's a man of his word, representing very well. For a great cause. Second straight year, the Rays have done that here in the spring to benefit the Pediatric Cancer Foundation. And uh, there you go. There's Todd Callis. I don't know if he's in line to get the uh, no, a haircut. No, no, or he's shaking his head. If he just no. wants to interview somebody. <laughs> Ron Porterfield, head athletic trainer for the Rays. Wilbur Bonilla, by the way, the stylist to the stars for the Rays. Port, uh, how you feeling about getting shaved out again? Hey, I got a little buddy by the name of Kyle Peters, man, lives in, in Sarasota that's a pediatric cancer survivor, man, so it's a great cause. Kyle Peters, he may be watching right now, so he, he's your guy that you're doing this for, huh? Absolutely, man. He's a good kid. This is the only time it's a pop-up down the line is going to fall just foul. Good try by Dominic Brown as he slides for that. Desmond Jennings, or excuse me, Yanel Escobar at the play. Uh, Ron Porterfield, this is the only time all season long we're going to find him sitting not running around or working somewhere. So this is your like your 10 seconds of is this called relaxation? Uh, I don't know when we're playing man. It's always stressful <laughs> Wilbur Bonilla um, I don't know how many how many uh, have you done today? How many shaved heads have you? I think we done up to like 70 today. Really? Do we, and Ron, is Ron one of the last ones here? Are you guys winding it down? Yeah, we're almost done. I think Michael Young from the Phillies won it Try to get up here to really? the so, yeah. 
Well, there you go. Uh, even a Philly is getting involved. Michael Young, apparently. So there you go. All the Rays, players, coaches, and now at head athletic trainer Ron Porterfield. Guys, back to you. All right. Uh, those uh, looking in are encouraged to text CUT to 50555 and make a $10 donation or visit PCFCutForCure.org. Rays doing this again this spring. How about that? Michael Young, the veteran of all veterans, first year over there with the Phillies. Uh, Going to be doing that, that. Well, there's Stuart Sternberg, our fearless leader owner. Earlier, in, uh, before the game. But that would be special. If he goes ahead and does that, uh, you know, to honor the pediatric hospital, I think is quite showing quite the veteran player that he is. He's chopped over the mound. Scooped by Galvez, the shortstop. He made a nice play to get Escobar right there. That was. He went a long way. Look where he's ending up. He's pretty much almost ended up at first base. Showed a lot of range. Great arm. Great body control. The thing here is about body control. When you make the, the pickup right here, you still have to be able to be running and throwing at the same time. Not get yourself out of control. Uh, in fact, the, the first telecast we had, we had Yunel a similar play that he ended up throwing away. There's the ground ball. And Dwayne, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, just off the glove. Franson trying to backhand it. I think that's a hit. Yep, that's going to be a base hit. Franson trying to pull off a nice backhanded defensive play. Designated hitter number 64, Shelly Duncan. Like seeing uh, you know hustle as much as he's hustling on the pop-up foul. Uh, he's come here with a really strong attitude as far as not being, you know, some cocky player. He's coming in really working hard every time that I've seen him. Well, Joe Madden, I think, is, has framed his situation uh, the way Joe Madden absolutely would. He, he says this guy could be the key to this team. And Shelly Duncan... The fly ball handled by Brown. And, and I think without directly putting any pressure on a guy, I, I think he's inviting him to be the player that uh, everyone thinks he can be. I think that's it. I think that uh, you, the, to the five tools are there, including speed. Even though as big as he is, he runs very well. And I think that's one of the things that most people are surprised by. But... Attitude is going to be the key. And I'm saying he has a bad attitude. I'm talking about focus and the day-to-day. -day. And uh, Ryan Roberts coming up here at the plate. And there's you now. And, and it's an, a, an issue, I believe, about something that we're seeing with Matt Moore, too, in the sense that, you know, it's inning to inning, game, you know, play to play, day to day. It's such a long season that if you keep that focus, the focus that we've seen from players like Longoria, players like Price, then you get to that superstar level and not just, oh, he's a good major league player. These guys have potential to be superstars. Well, Madden has said that he thinks Escobar absolutely could be a uh an all-star shortstop to lead this team and be a pivotal uh, component of the success that he anticipates this team will have. Roberts fouls it out of play, and the count is two strikes. And Joe is one of those guys, as we all know, some people would consider him a little unorthodox, but the way he approaches players and teams collectively, really important. One of the things he's maintained over the last couple of years, the more freedom he gives his players he thinks they will positively respond to that as opposed to trying to impose a lot of rules and regulations on people and you would think that it'd be you know a guy comes over here and he's had a little bit of issues as far as uh control and, and focus that you would want stricter rules but hopefully that joe's magic will prevail well, a man left on base. Longoria stranded at first. We're through four. one nothing, Philadelphia.
For just that, relaxing here at the ballpark. We go to the fifth. The Phillies lead 1 0. David Price's Ladies stellar 2012 season Jordan earned him the American League Cy Young Award. You can watch Josh him defend Field. that title throughout the season. And Saturday, April 6th, the first 20,000 fans receive a David Price Cy Young figurine presented by the Tampa Bay Times. For tickets, visit RaysBaseball.com or call 888 Fan Rays. Matt Moore back to the mound. Fields, Galvis, and Revere do up. And Matt had that uh, extended second inning of 35 pitches. He was at 65 through four as he opens the fifth inning. And the idea was somewhere around 75 for him. And Oh, I know you spent some time in the dugout here in the spring training game and uh, had a, an interesting chat with David Price. Sure did. I mean, just a couple of innings ago, I was talking to DP about Matt Moore. And about how I think he could mentor uh, this lefty. I mean, think about it. The, their first full years in the big leagues are very comparable. In fact, last year was the first full year for Matt Moore. We talked about it. He jumped on it. I said, you guys, you know, he actually did better than you. He goes, yeah, he did. Oh, I mean, I mean, he beat me in strikeouts. He beat me in all sorts of things. So he's a huge Matt Moore fan. And I think now he takes the role. And he knows it, and he was talking about that I got to keep him more focused and keep him in the moment because we do see those little lapses with Matt Moore. Uh, hitter to hitter, sometimes Dwayne pitch to pitch. So if he can stay in that focus, he's got the, availabil- the ability to be a Cy Young type pitcher. And that's uh, the kind of role that uh, Joe Madden and Jim Hickey uh, fully anticipate David Price will fill not only as uh, a Cy Young Award winning pitcher, but as that kind of teammate as well. Great and there's strike three call the fields. Bottom looking with a fastball in the upper quadrant away. He's had a little more pop on his pitch. Not so much that they're up in the, you know, the, no, the known 95, 97 mile an hour that we get later on from Matt, but he's had a little more just zip on it, even at 92. And uh, and much more fluidity other than that second inning with all his pitches, especially his curveball. I'm very impressed with the depth of the curveball today. And the first pitch, a strike to Freddie Galvez. You know, if you look at 08, which was Price's first full year, he was 22, 22 turned 23 uh, that year coming out of Vanderbilt. He was 10 and 7 with a with a 4.42 ERA compared to Mr. Moore, 11 and 11 with a 3.8 ERA. The league hit 238 off of Moore, 241 off of David Price. So you extrapolate that out, you know, and David Price now is the premier lefty in the major league. So. A lot of growth still to be had with Matt, but but this you know potential is there. And to have a guy like David Price uh, to be able to uh, help him in that rotation, there's always a friendly competition, but there's support that goes with it. And uh, and I thought uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, James Shields paid Price a, a, a big compliment when there was a statement coming out of the Kansas City uh, camp about. David Price and about the idea that the Rays had traded away Shields who had been uh, in one way or another a leader of this rotation certainly in, in innings pitched and Shields said that uh, he, he said he didn't worry about the Rays and where they were going to go now he said maybe if the trade had been uh, a year or two ago it would have made a big difference but he had full confidence that David Price could step in and fill that role. Great breaking pitch again by Matt Moore. Really liking this out. That's a great uh, uh, compliment by, by Jamie Shields. Uh, almost passing the baton, so to speak. And he and he felt that that he uh, left his very good friend David Price in, in good hands now, as far as being the leader. And he has to take that role. 80 pitches now for Matt Moore, and he's still in there past the 75 pitch mark, and he's throwing very well. Dwayne. Well, here's the top of the order, Revere, and the pitch just missed right there. I've got seven strikeouts for Moore, and I think at least four of those came on very good curveballs today. Excellent curveball, a lot of depth, and that's what you're looking 
for a curveball at this point right now. To keep it breaking and moving and dropping down as a hitter, you're looking for the hanger. You're looking for the curveball that you can react to. And the moment that you see it, okay, curveball, your mind kind of looks to try to keep it up. But the more that it drops and dives down hard, the more difficult it is to, to hit that pitch. And again, David, David Price, man, I think is going to be a catalyst. And while we were talking, he was supporting Matt. Matt got in a little bit of trouble. It was that second inning. And up comes Alex Cobb to talk about that inning with David about Matt. So you see already the, the dichotomy that's now coming from the next age of great pitchers. You know, before it was Wade Davis, Jamie, uh, uh, Jamie Shields, David Price. Now you're seeing Cobb more. Hellickson. It's the new guard. And there's Neiman next to him. Uh, they've got an, a, a beautiful dynamic. And I, I'm assuming that's Jim Hickey and how he runs that that roster of pitchers uh, of support. You know, and that's a good point because I think Hickey is a guy who uh, in, in many cases uh, like the Rays is underappreciated. Doesn't get the national acclaim. When you think about his career, not only with the Rays, but, uh, you know, over in Houston, he had some big name oh, yeah. uh, pitchers there, but he also had some pitchers that he had to bring along and, and then a stable of talented but young pitchers here and what he's done with them. So he really has been effective in, in any number of circumstances with all kinds of different pitchers. Incredible. I, I can't say enough. In, my, in the time that I've, you know, come back to Tampa and been around this team the last couple of years, I'm just super impressed with the job that Jim Hickey's done. To me, he is the elite pitching coach in the major leagues. It's Escobar and the toss to first. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Matt Moore. And so Moore, who had an extended second inning, otherwise has had a very good outing here today and leaves trailing one nothing. Well, Matt Moore, we've got him in the neighborhood of 88 pitches for five innings, so he extended that pitch count a little bit because of the second inning. But you can see in this sequence of strikeouts here how good that breaking ball was as a strikeout pitch. Outstanding. See the depth right there. I mean, this is what you're looking for. Look at how it keeps on breaking down. These are good hitters up at the plate for the Phillies. And then that is sets up that, the high fastball. There's the, the deuce again with deep, deep break. Not so much how hard the curveball is going, that you want to just keep that depth going down, then that sets up the high fastball. He's not even at 95 or 96, what we're going to see in a few weeks. That'll then be even more impressive. Yeah, we, we have him at uh, seven strikeouts, and I think five of those were on good breaking balls. And he used the fastball. He got the, we saw that one call third strike on a fastball, and he followed that up with a strikeout on a breaking ball of Galvez. Makes it a couple change-ups today, too, that were nice. He doesn't predominantly use that circle change as, as much as some of the other pitchers on the starting rotation, but you'll, you'll see it occasionally. Kelly Johnson facing the left-hander, John Lannon. Johnson trying to lift that last pitch. One and one to count. Lannon through four innings, has not allowed a run. On a couple of hits, he's walked a man. Oh, 
laying it in as the number five starter for the Phillies. After a, a run with Washington, spent a good amount of time at the AAA level last year. Franson takes care of Johnson. One away. You can subscribe to MLB.TV Premium right now and watch over 150 select spring training games live plus every regular season game live or on demand on over 250 mobile and connected devices visit RaysBaseball.com for details Sean Rodriguez his bat, hits a fly ball to Revere. Philly center fielder takes care of it. So that's two quick outs. Landon's had a clean outing nice. for the Phillies. Yeah, he's a little sinker slider, curveball kind of typical lefty. It doesn't overpower you, but always nice to have a lefty in that rotation if you can get one. And uh, Charlie Manuel's trying to see if Landon lands in that, 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 that five hole. Here's Will Myers. And he takes the pitch for a ball. Myers, his first hit of the spring was a double to right center field. And yesterday against the Orioles, he had an at bat where he got down on the count 0-2 on two very good pitches. And then on that 0-2 pitch, ripped one toward the left field corner. Gives you the, the scope. I mean, he's, he's not going to be a guy who's strictly going to pull the ball. I mean, he's going to hit the ball all over the place and with some pop right now behind at the count one and two and as a hitter he's not on like the position Chris Archer finds himself in as a pitcher a two talented uh, young men uh, you figure could be in the big leagues and, and could contribute but uh, most likely with Myers is a breaking ball and a pretty good one back door Myers headed to the minor leagues along with Archer and both understanding and with a good attitude about it. on through five headed into the sixth inning one nothing the Phillies lead the Rays and the Rays will make a pitching change Matt Moore working the front five and veteran right hander Jamie Wright who has been at camp as a non roster player last year with the Dodgers was in 66 games and he's had a very good spring and could be another veteran component to the bullpen and he's a guy who in all of this time wow. in the major leagues and with all of these different teams as you can see spread out over the map of the continental U.S. He's never been with a team that's gone to the postseason. He wants a World Series. Look at that. The guy's like a, a stand-up comedian just traveling around the, you know, the nation just, you know, doing his act. 
Most and, uh, recently there with the Dodgers in Los Angeles. And, of course, he'd go all the way across the country oh to spring training with the Rays this year. A proverbial veteran reliever. Good sinker, good slider. But 17 years with no postseason experience. Right, 38 years old, and he thinks he might be in the right place this time. Let's hope so. Want to know the count to Franson. Throws like a guy that uh, I think you know uh, pretty well. Uh, maybe son-in-law type uh, <laughs> type guy. Yeah, there's a bunt and a base hit. Well, you know, location is the key. And uh, in that way, Jamie Wright, not unlike Dan Wheeler. Yes. And uh, Dan was such an important part of turning this bullpen situation around when he came here from Houston. And they are two pitchers out of the same mold. Yep. A lot of strikes, a lot of ground balls, heavy balls, just playing catch with guys like Dan Wheeler, Reaver, and it hurts you because the ball is heavy and it sinks down and into the righties. And. So right here is a good opportunity for Jamie Wright to uh, get one of those ground balls and try to see if he can get a double play. And the pitch to Young is a strike. Yeah, Wright was hit on the right arm about, I think, three days ago here. A little line drive, but uh, that doesn't stop an 18-year veteran. Oh, no. Michael Young coming over to the National League, and uh, he'll be in, there. in order to get playing time. He's going to have to play defense. So two strikes to Young as Jamie Wright works to him, right in relief of Matt Moore and Todd Callis is standing by with Matt right now. Thank you, Dwayne. We're just talking about some of the pitches Matt threw today. We'll start with the curveball. That seemed to be really working well for you, huh, Matt? Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely there when I needed it, um, especially in those counts where um, you know you're kind of looking for a swing and miss one two oh two. Yeah, you know those pitches were especially the breaking ball were a little bit better today. What did you think overall of your appearance? Obviously that second inning got away from you a little bit, but overall were you pretty pleased? Yeah, I mean the second inning, our second inning was uh, you know it was pretty uncomfortable to have that, especially after a quick first inning and. Um, but, you know, third, fourth, and fifth felt good, and uh, it's nice to have one like this. Nice double play turn right there by Kelly Johnson. Is that the one thing you are looking uh, to to work on as you get ready for the regular season, is that inning-to-inning -inning consistency? Right, yeah. And, and, and overall, um, you know, command early in the zone, or mm -hmm. early in the count is the biggest thing. Um, you know, the first couple pitches tells a lot about each at bat, especially for me. And how about your fastball? I think it was sitting around 92. Is that about normal this time of year? Do you try and ramp it up as you get closer to opening day? Um, you know what? I mean, if that's what it is right now, I think that that's, that's probably where I've been in the past, maybe a little a little firmer. But, um, you know, I think that that'll, that'll probably smooth itself out as we get a little more repetitions in the camp. I love the fact that after your outing, not only do you get to talk to the pitching coach, but David Price, he's almost like an assistant for Jim Hickey, huh? He's out there watching you every pitch. Yeah, I mean, and he's he's actually got one of those voices that I can actually distinctly hear out there. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it does make, you know, it, it's a nice peace of mind, and it's, it's good to know that he's, um, you know, out there cheering you on. I, and it, it's nice coming from David just to, just to have it from him. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. All right, guys, we have a one nothing game as we head to the bottom half of the sixth inning. We'll have more from Charlotte Sports Park after this.
Rays coming in to hit in the bottom of the sixth. The Phillies lead the Rays 1-0. Fox Saturday Baseball returns with three great matchups. Angels outfielder Josh Hamilton returns to Texas to take on the Rangers. For the Yankees battle, the defending AL champion Tigers. For the Cardinals take on the World Series champion Giants in a rematch of the NLCS. The debut of Fox Saturday Baseball is April 6th. The Rays have been held to just two hits. They've drawn a walk in five innings against John Lannon, the left-hander. And Lannon will depart. We'll get a new pitcher. It's right-hander Justin DeFreitas. Coming on five innings for Lannon. Two hits, no runs. A walk, four strikeouts. And the Rays look at the right-hander. There's the kid, DeFreitas. You see right there, 13 games last season. Not a whole lot to go by, but uh, at least he held his appointment to 179. Right-hander, big, tall guy, throws hard. And hopefully now uh, we can get a little offense going. We got Landon out of the way. <laughs> so maybe uh, what a nice little job Landon did, only allowing two hits in those five complete innings. Six, excuse me. No, that would be five, actually. Bottom of the six. And Jose Lobatone leads it off for the Rays against the right-hander. Lobatone walked his first time. Afraid his last worked on Wednesday, pitched an inning. In a game against the Yankees, one scoreless inning. The Rays see him for the first time this spring. Dwayne, is it me or the Phillies got old kind of really quick all of a sudden over the last couple of years? You know, it's interesting because they've been hit by uh, age and by injury. And yeah. those two things seem to go together. Yes, they you do. Know, the older you get... Uh, the more difficult it is to stay healthy as a team. And I, th and I think the Yankees have found that. Yes. Charlie Manuel, you know, I, is there a manager in the history of the Phillies, a long franchise, had more success than Charlie Manuel? I don't think there is. No, and he just stated uh, yesterday that he doesn't plan to go anywhere. The big country guy uh, who I love, I've known him for many, many years, um, is saying, I'm staying put, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, the way that he talks, so I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> and uh, there's a big deep fly ball to El Lobo, but it's not going to be far enough yeah, to Dwayne. Brown has to come back in for it after breaking back. And so Lobatone is the first out. Yeah, when you look at the, the run that Charlie Manuel has had there, and I think Charlie's, what, 69 years old yes. now and, and still going strong. It really has been. Look at it right there. 727 and 569, a 561 clip. As uh, TK mentioned earlier, the Yankees, the Rays, and the Phils, the only teams to win 90-plus games in three out of the last four years. So they've been in the hunt. Well, they've got a World Series. We know that very well in yeah. 08. Well, Charlie's had five division titles, two pennants, and a World Series. Mm. Pretty nice good run. run. But they're challenged now. You're right. I mean, they got older. Uh, Chase Utley has had perennial issues with his knee, with his hip. Uh, you had the Achilles that they had to deal with uh, last year with the big boy. Ryan Howard seems to be back pretty strong off of that. Pitching injuries. Uh, it's just been a lot of different things. Yeah, there's a question about uh, Halliday over there. Yes. You know, he's he says, hey, I'm fine. And that's what you would expect to hear out of uh, such a great pitcher and great competitor. He struggled last year with physical issues, but uh, the people who follow the Phillies over there said, hey, he said he was fine last year, too. So we'll see. 2-2 Two -two now, the count to Jennings. Jennings is out, third to first. Two up and two down. It's 
Betancourt down there at third base now. Right. Michael Making Young. that play. Talk about a versatile player. Wilson Bet 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 no, excuse me, uh, Betancourt. Here's Escobar. Liner in the left. That's going to fall for a base hit. Big turn at first by Escobar. Escobar, and I think you referenced it earlier, you know, he's strong too as shortstops go. Uh, I think the third will all see him. More extra base hits than you might think out of him. Yeah, in fact, the thing that he has to remember is to not think so strong sometimes because I think he gets, you know, big hitter. You know, he's the type of the kid that uh, maybe hits a big fly and then all of a sudden you see the big swing for a while. He needs to maintain those line drive strokes, you know, right center type of approach. Uh, the home runs will come and uh, just get a higher on base percentage. I, I really think that uh, his speed is a uh, undervalued product. Evan Longoria with a strike to count. Evan had a base hit in the fourth inning. He's had a very good spring. And oh, you uh, observed that he's he's stronger than he was before. Yeah. Tap. This is Betancourt barehanding, but no place to go. Escobar continues to run, and he's going to be out at third base. Galvez taking the throw to put the tag on him. So Escobar out number three at third. That'll take care of the Rays in the sixth. Hits, but no runs. They trail one nothing. of the seventh inning. Charlotte Sports Park. one nothing. The Phillies lead the Rays. Matt Moore got five innings of work. In the upper 80s in pitch count. It started this game uh, all by throwing 11 consecutive strikes. Ran into a big pitch count inning in the second. And the Phillies got their run on a base hit by Carlos Ruiz and scored Dominic Brown. Matt Moore finished up working five innings and all things uh, considered uh, the Rays would be very pleased with what they saw from Matt Moore today. Mark Julie's now at shortstop. Cole Figueroa is in the game at third base. Kyle Farnsworth is pitcher number three. I'm looking forward to seeing Kyle Farnsworth throw. He's, uh, Having a nice little spring. Last year had the, the, you know, the arm issue, the forearm issue, and really couldn't get going. And we we missed him for the first part of the season. But I think he can be a, uh, one of those other catalysts in the bullpen. Add you know have that kind of a trio of closers, basically with him, Jake McGee, and Mr. Nasty. 
Mr. Nasty headed to San Francisco, and I'm referring to Fernando Rodney. Whoever did not see Fernando Rodney last night, maybe see if you can pick that up and uh, pull it up on uh, online or something, because he was something else for Team He's Dominica. in mid-season form. 97-98, Dwayne, on the black. Not just throwing 97-98, just letting it go. On the black, and then the changeup, flip-flop, Bugs Bunny, it's on there. Uh, it was a matchup between Rays for the second out of the ninth inning. Uh, he faced Ben Zobris. Look at that. He's, he's already tied a record of most saves in the WBC in one tourney with four. Unhittable. And he got the save last night, that 3-1 to one win over the, the USA. And, and that at bat against Zoe, he just worked them, worked the full count. Zoe battled him. Then he threw a 98 on the outside black that just said, see ya. Here's Darren Ruff ripping one toward the corner. That ball is fouled and out of play. Holding the count at 2-2, so the U.S. will play Puerto Rico tonight, and they're going to need a win to stay alive. Yeah, it's uh, tricky because they just have not had uh, that real success in 06 and 09 in the past two tourneys, and uh, they already beat Puerto Rico 1-7-1 a couple few days ago, so hopefully they'll be able to move on. The surprise team definitely has been the Netherlands. I, I spoke with Hensley Bam Bam Mullins, former yep. teammate of mine and uh, the manager of... Yeah, it's, it's been fun to see him have yeah. some success there. A good guy. Great guy. He's uh, obviously the hitting coach for the San Francisco Giants, so he gets to go back to his home ballpark uh, to, play, uh, to play on in the final four. And Ruff tied up a little bit on that pitch. That's Lee from shortstop making the catch. One away. So, Carlos Ruiz will be the hitter. Farnsworth, the third race pitcher, and Stephen Vogt has taken over behind the plates of the Rays have a complete new battery in there. And yes, Dwayne, he did drop the Rodney Hood arrow. <laughs> in fact, because you know us as Latinos, uh, after the third out in that big type of a game, uh, the whole infield came out. It was like Ro Rodney Hood and his merry men all through the arrows uh, along with him. <laughs> so yeah. it was Encarnacion, Reyes. Uh, they all had a, a fun time with that. This one is headed into center, right center. And caught out there by Will Myers. So two outs. John B. Perry Jr. More for five, right for one. He gave up the one hit that bunt single. And John Mayberry Jr. Jason Bourgeois now in center field. Replacing Jennings. And a shot. That's slicing away from Bourgeois, but he gets over there and makes the catch. Not the easiest play of the day. One, two, three. We are in the middle of the seventh. One nothing Phillies. Still a one nothing ball game. 
Rays are coming into bat at the bottom of the seventh inning. Reminder fans, you're watching this broadcast from home. You can go to FoxSportsFlorida.com to find the latest scores, in-depth players, and team analysis. Featured videos and a lot more will keep you up to date with the Rays and all your favorite Florida sports team. Log on now. Checked in again with uh, Todd Callis. He's standing by in the dugout with Jim Hickey. Appreciate it, Dwayne. Jim, you uh, saw Matt Moore throw his longest outing of the spring so far. And other than that second inning, uh, by the way, your, your PR director, Chris Fernandez, is monitoring this interview. Uh, other than that second inning, maybe his best outing? I, I would say his best outing overall, you know, regardless of the second inning. I think he threw 35, 32, 35 pitches in that second inning. A lot of 3-2 counts, a lot of foul balls. Actually, we were just sitting there counting them up. I think he had uh, six 3-2 counts in the game and about four of those with multiple foul balls. So that really pushes the pitch count up there. But all things considered, five innings and 88 pitches, uh, you know, he'd probably go back out there under normal circumstances and have a chance to be at six and 100 and maybe even go seven. So, you know, if we can get that on a consistent basis, and I think it will be better, I, I think we'll be okay. What did you like about what he did? You, did was the curveball as good as you've seen it this spring? As Duncan just crushes one to left, and we have a tie game. Shelly Duncan with his third spring training home run, and the Rays have tied it here at one in the seventh inning. Good timing. <laughs> To get Kyle Farns with the win here. <laughs> uh, but what'd you like? Was it was a curveball pretty sharp today? Uh, all of his pitches were sharp at times. The fastball was good. The changeup was really good, and the curveball as well. And at times they were very erratic, also. But the quality of the pitches themselves were good. So I was happy with that. Uh, the execution of the pitches wasn't always good. So it's something that we can continue to work on. When you look at Matt for 2013, towards the end of last year, Joe had a little bit of a shorter leash with Matt. But you had the James Shields and David Price sitting back there. That if you had a shorter out and they could pick up the bullpen. Now that Shields is not here, do you think Matt might you know, be that guy that if he gets in trouble in the fifth or sixth that can work through it as opposed to where last year you were, Joe was more ready to go to the bullpen? Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. And we actually had a little mini discussion right along those same lines just today uh, where we would probably allow him to work through some of that stuff. He actually seems to throw the ball better the deeper that he gets into a ball game. Uh, a lot of times he's better at pitch uh, 80 through 110 than he is at 1 through 80. Uh, so I think along the same lines of, uh, you know, if you think back to maybe Edwin Jackson, Matt Garza, the guys that Joe did allow to, you know, work deeper into ball games because they stayed strong, I think you'll see the same type of thing out of Matt. Ryan Roberts made the first out. Now Kelly Johnson flies one into left field, and there's out number two. Uh, before we let you go, right behind him was Jamie Wright, and he's been pretty impressive this spring, too. Yeah, he's been pretty impressive. His stuff is kind of sneaky good. You don't sit there and say, oh, my goodness, look at that. But he throws a solid 89-mile-an-hour sinker. He's got a really good curveball that he can throw four strikes and also to use as a put-away pitch. Uh, today was the first of his back-to-back -back days, so you'll see him pitch again tomorrow. So that's, uh, that's not a big step. But, you know, when you're a 14-year Major League <laughs> veteran and 37 or 38 years old, you know, you're, you're waiting for, you know, buttons to pop off of the shirt or whatever. So uh, uh, McGee also is throwing back-to-back. -back. He's throwing in a minor league game today, and he'll pitch at the Major League side tomorrow. When would you like to have that fifth starter locked in? You're getting, what, two and a half weeks away from having that decision finalized? Or maybe even before that, but two and a half weeks to opening day. Well, I mean, the sooner the better, but even if it took into the season, even if we went a game or two or three games into the season and didn't know if it was going to be one guy or the other, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But, you know, the sooner that anyone can settle into a routine, uh, the more relaxed they're going to be and, and hopefully the more productive as well. Appreciate the time, Jim. Thanks. No problem. Jim Hickey, guys, back to you. All righty. Thank you very much, Todd. Some good insight into the Rays' pitching situation there. Rays have tied it on the home run by Shelley Duncan in this inning. Two outs, and Sean Rodriguez at the plate. That home run by Duncan uh, right in line with uh, the conversation we had earlier about him sure and the value was. that he could provide this club. Thank you, Shelley. I mean, it made us all look good. We talked about him early in the game, about what type of battery could be, especially from the right side, being a power hitter, and we need some of those right-handed power hitters. A pop-up, maybe Ray it's going to be out of, play. out of play right there, and just behind Todd Callis. Make sure Todd is okay down there. Todd, Todd's waving. He's, he's fine. Yep. He had he had a glove on it. I think. Uh, oh, oh, that's a little bit of a uh, little luau, luau uh, reference there. To, yep. 23rd. Yeah, we have, we have that coming up here after the game on the 23rd. And him being a Hawaiian-born product, he knows about Luau's a little bit. 
2 2 the count to Sean. And runs it all the way out now. But getting back to Kelly real quick, I mean, it'll be difficult. Maybe something we need to look into a little further uh, in this game is just the, the 25 man roster and, and how everything is going to figure out. You've got, assuming 12 pitchers that they're going to start out with, especially early on, because you, you kind of want the extra pitchers. Well, there could be some decisions that are not easily made. No, no. It's going to be difficult. Will Myers. And more and more, it appears that uh, Will will start the season uh, at Durham. He seems to be uh, resigned to that. Tell you, it's nice to have that kind of help uh, a phone call away depth to watch him uh, develop down the other thing uh, about that uh, he's played uh, 99 games at triple-a right so it probably wouldn't hurt him to spend a little more time there that's not yeah it's not even a, a full season um, obviously and this kid he's got a world of talent what I like about his swing is not only how quick hands he has how flat the bat goes through the zone that means you covered more ground you can get the outside pitch he has a little bit of an open stand so right-handed pitchers especially and catchers will be looking to pitch him low and away but he keeps his bat very flat the way that he does that is by throwing the knob of the bat at the ball very well and then that gives you an opportunity to to not have as big a hole at the plate Pops it to the right side, short right, out from second. Branson is there to make the catch, and that retires the side. But the Rays get a run on one swing of the bat. Shelly Duncan at the first pitch at the bottom of the seventh out of here, and we're tied 1-1. One one ball game here on to the eighth inning the Rays and the Phillies home run by Shelley Duncan getting the Rays even his third home run of the spring. We're talking hit right there Jack Cust and Shelley two mashers. And the Rays will keep the parade of veterans out of their bullpen. Headed to the mound. Matt Moore worked five, followed by Jamie Wright, Kyle Farnsworth for an inning, and now Joel Peralta. And the DH, Josh Fields, will be the first man Peralta faces. What a great job he did last year. If you look at the, the game, 76 appearances, 76 games. Uh, only nine home runs kept the opponents at 200. Seemed to get stronger as the season progressed. Had a little hiccup early in the season, but then it was lights out. Great setup, man. Key for him. 
is the movement of different pitches that he throws and spotting them because he doesn't throw overpoweringly hard. He'll he'll hit 92 or 93, but he's pretty much fastball, curveball. He'll throw that great splitter, and he just keeps you off balance. Oh, and don't forget about the quick pitch. And he picks up the knees. Two strike count here on Fields. on that pitch. Well, it gives you a lot of legs and a lot of arms. And as a hitter, you have to you have to hone in and not get distracted. I remember a guy that you, I'm sure, did a lot of games with, Pedro Estacio, used to give you a lot of legs and arms, pitch with the Rockies and the Dodgers. And right there, that deke, then comes the splitter. And you got the same arm motion, too. That's also a very key thing, to keep the same arm throw. Everything's the same. But the pitches are different. Galvez takes the pitch upstairs. One and all, the Rays have a couple of changes on the right side of the infield as Freddie Galvez hits here. Mike Fontenot is in the game at second base. Chris Jimenez at first base. Pop foul. Vote away with the mask. Trying to make the recovery and cannot find it. Had a difficult time initially locating that one. And so there's one that you'd like to see caught. The count will go to one and one. He didn't have a, a, a tough time finding the, the home plate umpire when he threw his mask, though. He, he found him pretty good. <laughs> he flew it back and it hit the home plate, home plate umpire. But that ball with the high sky... Ah, oh, it's uh, it could be a lonely time, Dwayne, up there, trying to find that thing. And a little bit of a spring training win too. Just Figueroa barehanded and making the play. That may be the toughest play for a third baseman to make. And Figueroa, good job. No problem, actually. Very smooth to kick Figueroa. Watch him come in. I think he read the hands. And he, he was already in pretty good. But the throw across the body is the key. You got to be able to still have the availability to open your left shoulder to get across your body and have the arm strength. I mean, he, he's not a very big guy, but, but great arm strength to throw across your body like that. So the bases are empty. Ender Inciarte is the hitter. And he takes the first pitch for a strike. Inciarte is a rule five player out of Venezuela. He's been in the Diamondbacks system. Or two. Take a look at that play again. There's the bunt. Very good bunt. Maybe a little too hard, but Figueroa gets to it. You see it throwing across his body. Being able to open up his left shoulder, but still have enough whip and arm strength to, to get something on that. So, impressive defensive play. And there's that quick pitch. And the uh, Rule 5 uh, draftee fouled it away to stay alive. Hey, is this spring training? You got to work on that too, you <laughs> yeah, know. There you go. And for those of you that are wondering, isn't that a balk? There's nobody on base, and he specifically does it when there isn't anybody on base, so he can speed up his motion and not have to come to a full stop. And he's out on strikes. Two strikeouts in the inning for Peralta. This game is tied midway through the eighth. 1-1. One, one.
one one we're tied as the Rays coming to hit in the bottom of the eighth inning. Rays got a run in the seventh on a home run by Shelly Duncan. Phillies scored their run back in the second and the Phillies bring on a left hander. Jeremy Horst, 27 years old. Was their third pitcher of the day. Big lefty. You saw him uh, quite a bit last year, 32 games, and uh, pitched very, very well. Got a lot of movement on his ball. Fastball, curveball, sinker. Slurve, kind of slider. And uh, very effective, obviously, against the left-handers. And right away, here's a, a left-handed hitter coming up to face him. So I'm sure Charlie Manuel likes that the first two hitters are lefty because this guy is your, what you call your lefty specialist. So you want him to go up against some lefties in spring training. And it's Cole Figueroa taking the pitch up and in. Nice stop at second and they whip up a throw to first to get Figueroa. Figueroa made a bid for a base hit but denied and that's out number one. Brands had a nice play. Todd Callis has gone luau on us. Todd, where are you? Tiki Bar boys. Absolutely late in the game. And see, she's got the hang loose sign going. Tiki Bar late in the game. Now here's what's going on. Everybody's doing it. Um, a week from Saturday, 23rd of March, Rays play the Twins. We'll have that telecast for you on Sun Sports. And then after the game, we're going to check out these shirts. These are going to be our special Rays luau shirts. We're going to get behind the bar here. As you can see, it's bustling with business right now. And we're going to do a Hawaiian luau out here at the Tiki Bar at Charlotte Sports Park. It benefits the Charlotte County Family YMCA, Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Sun Coast, Charlotte County Habitat for Humanity, and Charlotte County Homeless Coalition. We're going to be serving up Mai Tais, some Maui Sunrises, some Molokai Smashes, you name it. The Rays Baseball Luau right here a week from Saturday. Gentlemen, back to you. Well, we can't wait to be a part of that. And uh, for a moment, I thought that maybe Luke Scott was yeah, out there. Me too. But uh, Luke uh, shaved his beard. Yeah, but she, yeah, Luke so. shaved his beard. And uh, mm. and Boat is out on strikes for the second out here in the eighth inning. Todd looks very comfortable in his luau shirt, Hawaiian shirt. I think he's worn those a few times. Any, any kind of leisure wear, yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's very, right there with it. Very comfortable. Yep. You know, look at that. He's easy. He stands out in the crowd now with that yellow. And very engaging. Jason Bourgeois up here. can play all over the outfield and has experience as an infielder as well so he's a perfect player uh, for the Rays to have in camp and to be a part of their mix in the organization he's very versatile you can't assume health unfortunately and that is such a key to any major league season but uh, so having a guy like this maybe in Durham a few guys like yep. this in Durham, I think, can be. Uh, we've seen what Figueroa can do. Bourgeois out of Houston, a, a friend of Carl Crawford. And, uh, Craw oh, yeah. And Crawford encouraged him uh, to sign here. How about that? Uh, he talked with him about uh, the atmosphere here, and it's a good place to play. And so Bourgeois here at camp with the Rays, and uh, I think you're absolutely right. He's. A good guy to have available at the AAA level if you find yourself needing a guy who can play a number of positions. So I would assume that uh, Carl Crawford did not recommend highly for him to go south to Fort Myers and uh, <laughs> sign with the Boston Red Sox yeah, organization. I just in, have a in, feeling. In hindsight, <laughs> I'd say you're right about that. I don't think he was promoting that one. the glove of course he recovers and the throw is in time and that'll retire the range of the eighth in order we're headed into the ninth it's tied 1-1 
We move into the ninth inning. It's a 1-1 ball game. Rays and the Phillies battling it out here this afternoon. Matt Moore, first five for the Rays. Wright, Farnsworth, and Peralta have followed. We'll be with you against the Minnesota Twins coming up next Saturday. That's a 1 o'clock game. It'll be our third telecast of the spring. Look at Jim Hickey, the Rays pitching coach, and they Go to the bullpen. Brandon Gomes will get the call, becoming the fifth raised pitcher of the day. Yes, uh, and it's good to see Brandon Gomes be back at 100%. He had some back issues winter before last, and I, I just don't think that he was at 100% last year at all. And I spoke with him this winter, in fact, and he, he says, man, I, I really feel good. I know, I know what back issues can be because when this kid is on, sinker, slider, strikes, throwing machine, and uh, I think he could be uh, a good addition to that bullpen. Fourth long. And to run this one down. That had some slice away from him, and that's out number one. We're seeing all the, the studs out of the bullpen today. Saw Jamie Wright. Saw Peralta. Obviously, uh, Farnsworth. He's thrown an inning. And, and here comes uh, Mr. Gomes, our pen. Dwayne, I mean, you've seen a lot of pens over the years. I mean, the last two or three years, our, our bullpen has just been outstanding. Yep, and, the, and they've, they've had to make a tweak here or there, it seems, every year. But, boy, it's uh, it really has been an outstanding part of this team. Gadeski Betancourt up here hitting for the first time in this game. With Pete Orr on deck. The center ball right there for this one. So two up and two down. Well, when you look at this club and, and the pitching, the, the depth, both in the starting staff and the bullpen, and then the improved defense, for that reason alone, and then when you look at the offense last year, it had to survive. And largely without Longoria and without the depth that they have this year. So Joe Madden just thought by uh, the fact that you're moving on and playing a new season, the offense, and there had to be 50 or 60 more runs in the offense and probably more than that. M m much more than that. When you think so, about it, we, we hit 175 home runs. We're 10th in the major leagues with 87 games missed by Longoria. 66 by Luke Scott. That's a foul ball. And you know, Scott's had, uh, we haven't seen him today, but he's had a good week. Nice. You know, he's, uh, and, and something that's uh, interesting to hear him say that, you know, he, he's getting the backside of his swing into uh, play now, which is really encouraging. Tells me that he's feeling a lot better. Well, he's feeling also healthier and, and just really motivated this year to, to, to show his real wares. Um, I've spoken a lot about hitting with him because I really enjoy speaking hitting with him and just in fact before today's game I, I told him hey nice second Jack and uh, and what he's trying to do is what I was talking about Will Myers that, that that kid at a young age does real well. He throws the knob of the bat and then you get a fuller swing and he's covering more of the plate you get the backside in action. You know that's the same thing that the uh that Chris Jimenez did last year. He went to the minor leagues and then had a great run there, had a great run offensively with the Rays, and he's done that this spring exactly the same thing. Yeah. So we've got we've got some offense, man. I mean, when you think about it, again, you mentioned the, the injuries. We also missed Matt Joyce for a good 20, 30 games. More than that. Great play. Diving stop, but it's a foul ball. That's Jimenez down there at first base right now. And, you know, he not only can catch, and he's really worked at making himself uh, a better catcher and a better throwing catcher. You see him at third. You see him there at first. So he's made himself more valuable there. Desmond Jennings missed 30 games last year with the shoulder. Obviously, Sam Fole missed a ton of games. That's a lot of runs right there. He may not be the big fly guy, but 
He's, he's a, a run scorer. And it's quality depth, too. Yes. That you miss. You have to then dig deeper into the reserve list. Fontenot takes care of this, and it's a 1 2 3 night for Brandon Gomes. We go to the home half of the ninth, tied 1 1. We got to the bottom of the ninth, tied 1-1. Rays have a run on five hits, and the Phillies a run on four hits. Matt goes over that spring lineup card. A little more informal in the spring than the regular season with all that. And the Rays will face a left-hander now, Antonio Mastardo. On Antonio Pachu Lee. Do to lead off here for the Rays. He's occupying the number three spot. Here are the numbers on Bastardo from last year. It's a big, big, uh, big guy for Charlie. In out of the bullpen, Antonio Bastardo is a lefty. Didn't have a great year last year, but but he was solid. Great walk to strikeout ratio. A lot of movement on his pitches, and, and again, one of his key guys. The setup to get to the big hammer, Jonathan Papabon, is Antonio Mastardo. Hawk Julie added to the minor leagues this year to continue to develop the offensive side of his game a very good shortstop with speed one ball no strikes love the kid love the kid Hawk Julie got a great attitude flat out picket got quick hands quick feet he'll, he'll figure out the hitting stuff and he also Dwayne, I think he's going to fill out. He's already since last spring. I think he's filled out. He was really skinny last spring. Looks great. He's ahead now, three and zero. Oh. Forced worked one inning, picked up a strikeout, and gives way to Bastardo. Lee draws the walk, so there's some speed at first base. Lee heads down there. Jack Cust will bat. And another reason that this is good, too. Jack Cust not going to be up there bunting, but he's a pull left-handed hitter. It's a lot of, obviously, fly balls, but he also hits a lot of hard ground balls to the right side. So we can quickly have first and third here with Hot Julie speed and the first baseman holding Hot Julie over there. Covers up on the pitch down. We're giving their Charlie Manuel's lefty specialist some lefties. To yes, <laughs> all three guys coming up on deck is Mike Fontano. Mike Fontano. So we're, we're definitely uh, he's pleased with that. Big old Charlie's going. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, might, I want my lefties to work on lefties. One and one to count to Cust. 
There's old Charlie. Two strikes. And Lee with speed over there at first. He has accumulated over 120 stolen bases in his minor league career so far. Two balls, two strikes. He's trying to stay away from Jack Cust. With the breaking pitches, Carlos Ruiz behind the plate, the super veteran. Knows that he doesn't really want to come in on the big boy. And a strike call. He slipped it over that inside part. Well. Again, he got him thinking away, 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 away. And actually, this was a mistake pitch. And Jack knows it. That was supposed to be away with a slider. And it was spring training flat. And that's the pitch that uh, Jack needed to pull the trigger on. Now Mike Fontenot takes a strike. Well, that's... A case of where those things back up and they turn out to be effective because the hitter is not expecting that. He's not, he's not expecting it to stay in in that plane. Uh, he's going to go farther away and keep breaking, and it didn't. Number two, Fontenot out of LSU. He's had some time in the big leagues and the National League with the Cubs and the Giants and recently with the Phillies. What a good little player he is. Yeah, he was on that team at LSU that won the College World Series in 2000. With Skip Burton. Spoke to him about that. I'm, a, I'm an LSU Tigers fan. Baseball wise at least. Takes it away. Two balls and two strikes. Keep an eye on he Lee, on Lee here. See if uh, Joe lets him go. Fontano fouls it out of play. He'll see another one. Chris Jimenez is the on deck hitter. Lee Walk, Mark Julie, and he's aboard. That's Jimenez on deck. And a roller to short. Galvez gets one at second, and they will not get the backside. So it's a fielder's choice. Lee is forced. At second base. So it'll be two first gone base, with Fontenot at first and Chris Jimenez getting a chance to hit for the first time today. Chris is having a really nice spring. Yeah, he's he, he does have an option left which probably works against him making the roster, but boy. He is a guy who's hard not to root for because he's a hard worker and he's really shown that he can be a valuable member of this team. There goes the runner. Good jump and there's no play. So Fontano steals second. Wow, he went what you call FM. First move on the pitcher. You just put your head down and just go. Regardless if he throws over to first base, you're going to try to still beat the first baseman's throw to second. And there was no play for Carlos Ruiz. Smart job by Chris at the plate to just take that pitch regardless where that was. 
You mentioned about Chris hitting 423 this spring, doing a great job, and that's all you can do right now. I mean, just all you can do is make it very difficult for them to, to make that decision. And even if they still make the decision, because you hit 500, it doesn't matter. It, it's memorable, and, and you'll be thought of whenever there's that injury. A roller to short. Alves with the throw, and that takes care of the Rays. So the Rays leave the potential winning run at second base. We're through nine, and we're tied 1-1. Extra innings, not only for the Phillies and the Rays, but for the McCarver family as well. In the middle of that trio is Tim McCarver, Fox baseball analyst, along with Joe Buck. To the right is his daughter, Kathy, his granddaughter alongside as well, and his grandson, Bo Root, getting a chance to be a bat boy today, and he was all fired up about that. His first day ever as a Phillies bat boy, 12 years old, and he loves the game of baseball. Guys, following in granddaddy's footsteps, but good to see Timmy the Mac out here watching a little Phillies and Rays extra inning baseball. Back to you. It sure is, and uh, there's a, a look at Tim's grandson. That's a, that's a great day at the ballpark there, 12 years old and being the bat boy. And you know, it's hard to imagine his grandson's 12, Tim was only five or six years older than that when he signed and no broke way. into the big league. Wow, how about of, that? He was like, a, he, like he was an a Al line kind of guy. That's that that really team. Just a brief time, wow. and then and was one of those young catching phenoms. How about that? Yep. Well, we go to the tenth extra innings, and this is going to be it. The tenth inning, it will be decided or not, but it will be conclusive. Mitchell leads it off and bounces it back. So Tim was 17 when he first appeared in the major leagues. Tim McCarver. Wow. I did not so know that. Only five years older than his 12 year old grandson, who's the bat boy for the Phillies today. I knew the K line was up at 17. If I'm not mistaken. Straight out of high school, 17 or 18. Yeah, never played in the minor leagues. Never played in the minor leagues. But uh, I did. I, 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 I thought McCarver was more like 19 or 20. But wow, that's impressive. I don't care what era you're in. That's, you're 17 years old. You're young. Playing with men. One and two, the count to Jermaine Mitchell. Chases this one. So the Rays pitching now in double figures and strikeouts. Matt Moore had seven. Catcher and number 51. Carlos five Luis. of those on the curveball. Let's, let's see that last. This is this is a purpose set up strikeout pitch if I ever saw one. That's exactly where he wanted it. He wanted to be up. Up and in, in away in the zone, somewhere where he couldn't get hurt by accident with missing too low on a one-to-one -one game at the top of the tenth. And and I've just I can't say enough how healthy Brandon Gomes looks this spring. He is not allowed to run. He's just throwing like Brandon Gomes in the second half of eleven. Dwayne, mm -hmm. look at the cut. You know you can really tell right. by the swings of the hitters. How effective a pitcher is at Gomes. Yeah. Sinker slider and enough oomph on the fastball that he didn't have last year.
to keep you honest. One ball, two strikes. And Ruiz, boy, he's he didn't get any good cuts at all. And I know it's mid spring. But this is Carlos Ruiz. I mean, if this was the savior last year for the Philadelphia Phillies with the all-star types, you know, and he's one thing about him is that Carlos Ruiz puts the ball in play. He's not a big strikeout guy, so he'll 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 put the ball in play. The movement on the slider earlier when he fooled him, and you were talking about just that, was great. And then even more movement on the sinker in. So you're 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 darned if you do and darned if you don't. You're just stuck. This is Mayberry fouling one out of play. From the top of the 10th, this game will go 10, and that's it. It's been tied since the 7th. Shelly Duncan hit a home run to left. Ball is up and it's one and one. Two and one. Gomes came on and worked a perfect ninth inning and has back to back strikeouts here in the tenth. Close. Close. Very close. Three and one. Here's an interesting little pitch right here. The wind's kind of blowing out to left much more than it is to right. Kind of crosswinds from right to left. 3 1 pitch and a 1 1 game in the 10th. And, and good power. Not great power from Mayberry. He's more of a gap hitter, Dwayne, but, but, but enough pop on this kid. That's going to take the count all the way out. Doing a two seamer, kind of tied him up, which is a little surprising. Three one here. Now he's got him thinking. Mayberry's going. I was kind of looking out over the plate, and you came back in on me. I wouldn't be surprised to see the sweeper right here, Dwayne. He strikes out the side. One, two, three. Go the Phillies in the tenth. Rays coming into hit once again. Tied one, one. We go to the bottom of the 10th inning and uh, win, lose, or draw. This is going to be the final inning here. As the uh, clubs will exhaust their uh, available pitching. We're going to see Jake Johnson, the left-hander, the fifth pitcher of the day for the Phillies. And Johnson, who is out of Canada, 
will face the Rays here in the bottom of the 10th. Comes a little sidearm there, warm it up. It's always kind of interesting whenever you see a lefty come sidearm. Got a nice little fastball slider curve. And uh, th these are the emergency pitchers you bring on the road with you when, in the spring training game when you want to get that extra inning in. So he's got a very young face, Dwayne. The kid looks like he's 15 years old. <laughs> but uh, he's out there to try to hold hold the tie. Well, Johnson pitched collegiately for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And he's facing Leslie Anderson here in the bottom of the 10th. I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. I like the the next matchup. Will Myers on deck. Yes, sir. Yep. Lefty, righty, wind blowing a little bit out towards left center. I, I'm looking forward to that one. There you see the flags. 2 0, the count to Anderson. And again. Leslie's had a nice little spring. I mean, you know, he's in that kind of no man's land <laughs> scenario a little bit and uh, probably will be optioned out. But he's showing not only the Rays, but the rest of Major League Baseball that that he's getting better. And he's around the corner from being a Major League Baseball player. Goes 3 1 and pops it up. That court handles that. So a pop to third, and Will Myers will stroll to the plate to face the lefty. Will all for three today. Huh. The first pitch is a strike. Will started the day this spring hitting 300. He's 0 for three. Popped out his last time. He was nine for 30. There's three doubles and a triple for the spring. So he could use a long one. Well, yeah, that's the one that's missing in there. So, and it would be very apropos right now with the bottom of the 10th, and that's all we're going to play. So, come on, Will Myers. Ooh, good fastball in the outside corner for Jay Johnson. One and two. Don't think he's going to spin one up there. I think he'll go low and away or up and away. Didn't want to miss. Carlos Ruiz probably didn't want to miss with a breaking pitch here. There he is. And he picks up the corner right there away. And Myers caught looking. Two gone. There went my lotto pick there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Man, that was a good little pitch right there. A little frisbee. Backdoor late cutting fastball. Well, the kid from where? Texas Tech? Yep. It's uh, out of Canada and then went to school at Texas Tech. There's Cole Figueroa. I want to know, you know, Figueroa came to the Rays in the uh, Jason Bartlett deal that also brought uh, Brandon Gomes. All right. And uh, Cesar Ramos. Yes, from San Diego. Mm -hmm. Nice little deal. Yep. Especially with the Gomes and Cesar Ramos. Just just stop there and you're and you're pretty yep. happy. I, I'm real big on both those relievers. Yep. Adam Russell was also part of that Adam deal. Russell. Who else did we give up? So, I mean, that pretty much was Four it. Four to one? What is he, Bon Hayes? What was going on there? <laughs> <laughs> What was Vaughn? I think it was like seven for one. Yeah, some six, six or seven. I yeah. think, yeah. That's crazy. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland and Philly, actually. Or he went fr from Cleveland to Philly. 
3 0 to Figueroa, and he's on for the walk. Well, when you think about that deal now, you know, Ramos, I, there's a, to me, there's a potential real sleeper on this staff. Uh, Cedar? Cedar oh, Ramos. He, he could help in a big way. And, and then Figueroa, little pitch running action. Rich Thompson is going to run for Figueroa now. So, yep. if, you, if you put Figueroa in there, and we've seen Gomes, and we've seen what a healthy Gomes can do, and we've watched him be impressive in two innings today. So that's uh, potentially kind of a sleeper deal. Major, major sleeper deal. You know who I really like, too, is, I mean, and when you mentioned Ramos, that Ramos could start for you in an oh, emergency. Oh, yes. Yep. That's so why that's I nice think he know. could be very big on this pitching staff. Steven Vogt up here. Strike the count to him. With the pinch runner at first and two outs. Mm, that'd be an interesting way to get the potential winning run. At least in scoring position, if not all the way around. Thompson, as you know, can really run. That's the first thing I, I asked him when I saw him last week and it's rink training. I go, how are your legs? He goes, oh, they're great. They're great. They're in good shape. Vote struck out in the eighth inning. So this is his second plate appearance of the day. the right field line down toward the corner that's got some carry and it's gone game winning home run for Stephen Vogt it comes on a 1-1 pitch and the Rays are going to be winners today Stephen Vogt who had a rough day until that pitch he came in the game the, the, the catch dropped the pop up behind him struck out and I just, I actually told you, I said, man, what a rough day poor Stephen Boat is having. Not anymore. One pitch can change your day. Well, with the wind blowing out to left, Boat hits one out to right. And the Rays win their 13th game of the spring on a two-run, two-out home run in the bottom of the 10th off the bat of Stephen Boat. And the Rays win this game 3-1. to one. Let's go down to Todd Callis and today's hero right now. Thank you, Dwayne. How about that one? <laughs> when did you get the home run sign from uh, George Kuzendrick? Yeah, Cuz looked down at me and said, hey, get your pitch in this thing right here. You had the wind going the opposite way. You had to deal with that as a catcher, but did you think you had enough when it, when it first left the bat? Oh, uh, you know, I, I knew I hit it pretty well. Um, you know, but in these parks, and you know, like you said, with the wind, you just never know. But uh, fortunately, I was able to get enough of it. We saw Brooks Conrad last year go with the no gloves. I think you were the original Ray. Now Will Myers is the trends catching on in this clubhouse, huh? Yeah, I guess. You know, they see they see me doing it. You know, that's that's the only thing I can think of is why they're doing it. No, but uh, no, it's it's all a feel thing, and, and uh, I just love it. You're literally bottom of the tent, two outs. You know, there's no extra innings. You never think about a home run in real life, but today. Do you at least, because you know the situation, there's no extras, do you think about it? No, and that's actually probably why I hit it, because I wasn't thinking about anything. I just, you know, just that uh, off lefties, I've been having trouble seeing the fastball this spring, and I said, you know what, just get your foot down, expect the fastball, and uh, see what happens. Nice job, Voter. Thanks. Thanks again. Stephen Vogt, guys, wins it. Back up to you. All right, way to go, Todd Callis. <laughs> way to go, Stephen Vogt. Well, what do you think, Oh. All's well that ends well, and a good day for the Rays, as it turns out, and a pretty good day for Matt Moore all in all. I think uh, overall you got to look at the key to the Rays, which is pitching. It always starts and ends with pitching, and today Matt Moore sans that little 35-pitch uh, inning in the second. I, I saw a very more concentrated Matt Moore, great depth to the curveball, and then you move on from there. What a great job with our pen. Uh, we talked about what the saving grace they've been the last two or three years. Uh, Farnsworth comes out, shuts it out. Uh, Gomes does an incredible job for two. Ten-plus strikeouts again for another game in the spring training. Every, every time I look at a box score, I think the Rays pitchers got ten strikeouts in spring training. So that's the key, and, and once it then gives us a chance. And so the Rays are winners in ten innings. It's a three-to-one final here. The Rays now 13-7 and seven on the spring. The Phillies drop to 8-11. and 11. For Todd Callas and Arrestus Destrada, Dwayne Stats, great to have you with us. 
Hope you've enjoyed the telecast. The Rays win it 3-1 to one in 10 over the Phillies. This has been a special presentation of Sun Sports. Tune in next Saturday as the Minnesota Twins and the Tampa Bay Rays square off. Our coverage begins at 1 p.m. in high definition. Don't forget to log on to FoxSportsFlorida.com for the latest news and information surrounding all your favorite Florida sports teams.